Hi and welcome to the FormPro rating site. My name is Neil Davis and I run this site along with the formpro.co.nz site and David, our web designer for the site, uh, puts a lot of time into making sure all the data ends up in the right place and all the calculations are done properly. So we really appreciate the work he puts into this. Right, let's just explain how the website works first of all. Um, best place to start off is the About page which explains how the ratings are actually worked out. Basically the numbers, the higher the number, the better the, the performance of the horse. And each horse that races, since April the 1st, 2010, has a numerical rating. So you can quickly compare horses in future races and see which horses are best suited to the track or conditions of the, of the, uh, the surface or um, other things as well. These are the factors that I used to work out the, the rating of the race or the actual rating of the winner and then the horses that finish in behind have a calculation worked out based on how far they were behind the winner and the weight they carried. The class of the race obviously is really important, uh, the size of the field, the race time compared to other race times on the day, uh, the tempo of the race also uh, can give you a lot of information about the uh, performance of the of the of the field and how far they can go, etc. Um, in terms of um, how good they are, I use the New Zealand handicap ratings sometimes to give me a guide on the strength of the field, the stake of the race, and whether it's a listed race or a group race, etc., etc. Uh, the winning margin, uh, the weight carried, and the ability of the other horses in the race. So a lot of many years of experience goes into working out the final rating of the winner. And then the rest of the field is worked out on a calculation based on the distance of the race, how far they were behind the winner, and the weight carried. If you have any questions about that, please ask. Uh, just email me at formpro at formpro.co.nz and I'll do my best to explain. Okay. Right, let's go back to, we'll go to the um, formpro ratings page. I'll do the thoroughbreds ratings and then I'll do the greyhound ratings after that. Click on the formpro ratings. And it's probably best if this is the meeting coming up tomorrow. It's best if we go to a meeting that's already been run. So I'll just go to select another meeting. We'll select um, 16th of April. No, we won't. We'll go to last Saturday, the 14th of April. Okay, and we'll go to Auckland. Okay, and we'll go to race six. The last 65 over a mile, and I'll explain what these columns are all about and the figures, what the figures are all about, so you get a good feel for what, what is going on here. Firstly, there are all the race numbers up there, and if you want to go to another meeting like Canterbury on that day, just click on there and find the race you're after. Right, in the first column we have the obviously the horse number, followed by the horse name with the barrier draw, the jockey with any allowance the uh, jockey can claim the weight in the book it's supposed to carry, then the carried weight, that's the weight less the allowance. So for example, just got home, 2 kg allowance, 58 kilograms in the book, carried 56 kgs. The day since its last start, um, R1 is R stands for the most recent start, so it's last start rating, followed by the two starts back, second most recent start, three starts back and four starts back. So the last four starts ratings, really important recent form, and then you have those figures there. The D stands for distance, so the best rating over that distance. As you can see, Rainmaker was quite high there. Um, the track, the best rating on that track. This is since April the first, 2010. Um, if if dash D is fast to dead conditions, so horses that perform well on a decent track. Yeah, their ratings there. Horses that perform on wet tracks, slow to heavy, S to H, slow to heavy, all their ratings are down there as well. Okay, B1 is the best figure plucked from the last four starts and plonked on that column there. Okay, and the B2 column is the best rating since April the 1st, 2000, 2010, and the adjusted column takes into account the weight carried. For example, let's 
just a weight carried over the, the lightest weighted horse in the race. So let's find the lightest weighted horse, 53 kgs, GG girl, 53 kgs. So if we use number one, Rainmaker, his best rating out of his last four starts was 104. Now if he was carrying 53 kgs, his adjusted rating would be 104, but, but because he is carrying 3 kgs over the uh, lowest weighted horse, he gets penalised for that, depending on the distance of the race. Because um, more weight, uh, the more distance you're running over, the more effect the weight has. So Rain, uh, Rainmaker goes from 104, and he gets a penalty of 2 rating points. Remembering 1 rating point equals 1 length. And his adjusted figures 102. It's very important. That's a com, uh, column I'll discuss in a moment. Okay. Now you may look at these figures here and think, okay, where was that start? If you hold your mouse or your cursor over that figure, you will see it. That start was on the 31st of March, Ellerslie, on a good three track, over 1500 metres, finished seventh, 5.9 lengths from the winner. Okay. And this little oh, example there. Come up again, anywhere, if you hold the mouse or the cursor over that number, up comes the start. These little numbers here above the number, for example 1, means there was one horse that is one out of the race. And it's a good indicator of the form of the race, how much form is coming out of the race. For example, this one here, Molto Grato, there's seven horses out of one out of that race since it's been run. Very handy figure to know if you want to know the good form races. You can pay to check back on those races just to see how strong that form was and how good those horses were that won out of the race. So a nice little handy figure to be aware of. Okay. Now these arrows are really important. The most common column used is the most recent start column. If I click on that, immediately sorts the order from top to bottom of the best recent start down to the lowest recent start, okay, followed by the second, third and fourth column. The red figures, or the red ink we often call it, refer to it as, is the, the best in that column. If there's two, obviously them the same, the other two top, okay. Um, so it's very handy, at a glance you can see which horses have the best ratings in each column. And down here we have the result of the race. In this race, number 10, Innovation 1, paying $12.80. Okay. Right. Um, if you want to quickly find out which are the best placed horses in the race, click on that down arrow. And it sorts them straight away into the best rated horse based on its last four starts with the weight adjustment taken off it. Okay, so in this case, Innovation. The top rating of 103, and he won paying $12.80. And the second rated horse, Rainmaker, was second at $2.30. Nice result there for the ratings. Okay, And the 103 rating was based on, it was run four starts back, I think it was the Desert Gold Stakes, and there have been five winners out of that race since. So, did he, he was down in the rating since then. I know that previous start he was caught back of a slow pace, had excuses, so... He looked a good value bit on that race. Right, um, what else can I explain here? Um, so know, knowing about these arrows uh, is a very good bonus. It quickly sorts on sorts the best, most recent rating without the the weight adjustments. The best overall. If you hold your mouse over the arrows, you can see what the column is about. Sort by best form. Pro rating since April the 1st, 2010. I click on that. It was Rainmaker at the best rating. Okay. So there's lots of information that you can you can go through to work out um, which horses are in the best, most recent form, and which ones of those are the best place to win the race. Let's go to the race filter. A very handy thing to know about. Um, takes a while to load, a few seconds sometimes to get this page going because there's about 80,000 uh, bits of data on there that needs to be processed. Let's go to Tiara Racing tomorrow. Uh, we'll go to race 7, I think that's a, 
uh, 65 race. Here it is, yes, R65 race, 49 meters with $7,000. Now, let's say the track is uh, a good track at the moment, dead, and there's rain forecast. In the morning, you hear the rain's coming down, and by the first race, the rain's still, still pelting down, and by the seventh race, you know it's probably going to be a heavy track, and a, um, a pretty heavy one at that, probably. Okay, so we can quickly work out which horses have the best ratings on a heavy track. So we'll go to, um, we can click on um, Tara only, but that's a bit restricted, so we want to find out all the ratings on all tracks in the country. The distances, uh, let's do 200 metres either side of 1400 metres, so it's from 12 to 1600 metres. And we'll do heavy tracks only, so it's going to be a bog. All date ranges, I want to go at least through to the last, last year, because we want to get capture last winter's form. Some of these would have raced over the last winter, so we'll take that into account and we will submit that. And so what happens, the hose down at two hour tomorrow. The best rated horse on a heavy 11 track is Let Me Buy with 98.5. Valley of Diamond had the next three best ratings, and Let Me Buy, fifth and sixth best ratings. So those two horses there, uh, with a lot of investigation. If the rain does happen to come down and cats and dogs. Okay. Right, you can also change this to say it was a slow to heavy track or just slow track. You can change it to slow and heavy um, and submit that. And then this column here will change to get the slow and heavy horses in. So the captain, if it was a slow track, bordering on heavy maybe, you take into account the captain. He's very, or very highly rated there. 107.6, so if it was a slow track, um, I would give him a lot of, lot of consideration. Right, you can actually click on the horse and go back and see where that rating was. 107.6, was it towering a race course behind a good horse and undisclosed? Okay, so you can investigate that further, go back even deeper if you want to. Right, we'll just go back over here and we'll go back. So a very handy thing to know, especially if we get unseasonal tracks, like a heavy track in the middle of summer, or a good track in the middle of winter. It's a good accurate way of finding out which horses have rated the best. Right, let's go on to the market maker. Very handy to know about this. This is more for more serious punters. Uh, if you're finding out, if you can convert the rating to a price, and it makes it easier to know if you can if you're getting value for money. For example, um, you can click on any one of these three here. The market price to 100% is the best one to use. The bookies price their horses around 128% to 100, sometimes a wee bit higher, sometimes a wee bit lower. So we've made it 130%. And generally, what that generally means is that their, their prices will be sh shorter than 100% market. So by 100% market, you're getting the true rated price of a, of a horse. Okay, so I'll leave it there at the moment and we'll go to race 7 again because there's more form there. And you'll notice we have the same columns and we have the adjusted rating used as the predicted rating for the horse. Now you may decide to go through each horse and change that predicted rating to what you think it will rate for that race, depending on draws, um, jockeys, track bias, whatever and change those. So let's say it uh, did hose down with rain and you just knew that the captain had a rating of 108 and his form was very good on a wet track. 96 is a tad low you'd think on a heavy track. So we'd change that figure to say 102 because we know we can rate 108 and his recent form tells us that he's in pretty good form. So he can rate there and you'd go through and adjust other horses just to demonstrate how you can actually um, change the market depending on what you think it will rate. Change these figures here. I will. He's paying thirteen dollars heady there. Let's submit that, <coughs> and his price virtually halves to six dollars fifty. So if you thought that um, if he's paying say ten dollars, you would you would know if you went through the rest of the horses' ratings that he was a pretty good value bet. Okay, very handy thing to to know about. 
Right, let's go on to form races, a few form races. Over the last 22 days, you can now find out which races have had the most number of winners coming out of them. Uh, there's three for that one. Two, 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 all the horses, all the winners coming out of those races there. Okay, so that's the last two months you want to know about. Click on there. And you'll see that uh, Young Bachelor is the most winningest race in the last two months with six winners. Um, Valley of Pentire has five. Technique, five. Uh, Choice Bro. Um, in the group three race, five winners coming out of that. So you can click on that race on the link there and go back and see which horses have won out of the race there. Let's try one. Um, let's try Choice Bro's race. Five winners coming out of it. Two old race. Good race. And you can see there's the race there with Choice Bro winning, with his rating figure, and all the horses that raced. But we want to know which one of these horses have won since. So it says up here, view, ra view race form from this race, five winners. So we'll click on there. Okay. And it shows every horse with their placing um, that have won and been placed out of there. You can quickly click on just the winners by going wins only and seeing that um, Swipe of the Fox, which won at Ellerslie on Saturday, Platinum Kingdom on the other day, Choice Bros obviously won the size produce since then, Swipe of the Fox won at uh, Counties, went on to win there again, and On Your Feet won at Hastings. So a reasonably strong form race coming out of there. And um, if you know about Swipe of the Fox before Ellerslie last Saturday, it would, would have given you more evidence to, to say you could have you know, a better bet than twenty odd dollars that he paid. Well, we'll just go back through there. Okay. And if you want to change the say to the last to the last thirty five days, instead of sixty, just go up to there, click on there, go backspace, thirty five, enter. And up comes the last thirty five days. Okay, she's so gorgeous or she's gorgeous. There's four winners, the most winners coming out of that race. So you can fiddle around with that and get a lot of, a lot of information out of it. Okay. Right. Um, oops, it's easy. Go to speed maps. If you like making speed maps for yourself, you can say go to a race and work out which horses will lead, settle in the trail, lead trail, settle handy midfield, back, or well back. Okay, let's say, um, let's do it for a simple one. Um, say Flying Legend will go forward with Morpheus. Um, Palimo might settle handy from that draw. So Davin may drop back. Under's Girl might settle in the trail. Um, Bob Valdez mid, uh, or might settle a bit handier. Um, Quetzalo Cattle will probably go back. That may go well back and he'll be well back too. And click on Submit. And up comes your speed map. There's your leaders, horses in behind, horses back, and horses well back. Okay. Right, we'll just go back out of there. Oops. You click on race results and go back and see what horses rated uh, in recent races. For example, at Wipe the other day, pay attention one, there's his rating there, 94. Point two, then the rest of the ratings of other horses there. Okay, go back out of there. Uh, if you want to search for a horse, let's say you um, own a horse, and that horse could be a handy horse called Veyron. Let's have a look at him. See his rating since April the 1st, 2010. Click on Submit. And you can see all his runs since the 2nd of November. 100, it's progressively increased up there, 118, 115, 117, 118, and actually his Easter um, was his strongest rating ever, 119.8, with a big weight he carried, and that strength of the field is one of the top ratings so far this season, 119.8, so well done Veyron, okay, and you can click back through, and have a look at the race, and see the ratings of other horses in the race as well, okay. Right, see Timmy Shu at 118.2, which is pretty good considering the weight he carried. He just peaked in his run, and uh, hopefully he can just improve another 
one or two more rating points, which I think he could, and be very, very competitive in Australia. Right, let's go back out of there. Um, you can also, if you aren't too sure the spelling of the horse, go to search A to Z and go through there and click on the horse and find out its ratings quite easily like that. So if you own a horse or want to just want to research a few horses, you can do that. Okay. Um, can go there. Okay, I'll do greyhounds in another video, but um, for the thoroughbreds, I've pretty well covered everything there, nothing else. Click on the next race, so it's busy Saturday. Click on the next race, and up will come the next race. But there's no races today, obviously, so no racing. It's a Tuesday, so no racing there. So hopefully uh, you can uh, learn a lot more, have you learned a lot more about the ratings there, know how they work, how they're arrived at, and how you can use them to find those good value winners. That's what it's all about. If you have any questions, email me at formpro.co.nz and I'll do my best to answer them and I may even answer the questions on the website because other people may be thinking of the same question as well. So uh, good luck and good punting.